Pixar is personally my favorite film studio of all time. They made my favorite franchise and favorite movie of all time, Toy Story. And now we have another one of their films that is finally getting a sequel, Inside Out. And let me tell you right now, I loved this sequel. And I'm so happy to say that in a way, this kind of felt like the Toy Story 2 for this franchise, and I'm very excited to see where they take it next. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're discussing Inside Out 2. This is about joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust have been running a successful operation by all accounts. However, when anxiety shows up with a group of new emotions, they aren't sure how to feel, specifically when the puberty button goes up. Off. This is all, of course, taking place in Riley's body, but now she is a teenager. And I didn't know, you know, you get a little bit nervous when they said that they're making a sequel to a very successful Pixar film already. And every time that they've done this, I've gotten nervous, but usually they come out on an accomplishment. And all I can say is that coming out of the gate, I loved Inside Out 2. I thought Inside Out 2 was a great new sequel that goes to those new lengths and really much in a way matures this franchise with the audience that may have grown up with it or maybe has saw it at a young age when they first saw the original Inside Out. I also think what's interesting as just kind of like a side note and a personal note, the original Inside Out was the first movie review I ever did on this channel. Now, you can't publicly see it anymore, but if you look really hard on my channel, you can find where I'm reacting to it and it's cringy. But so was being a teenager. And when I made that review, I had originally just graduated high school and I saw the film and I just needed to talk about it so badly because I loved it. And it is one of my personal favorite Pixar films of all time. And now after watching this, as I mentioned in my intro, this kind of did feel like the Toy Story 2 for this franchise. It goes to bigger lengths. It has a bigger adventure. It adds new ideas. And it as well has a lot of new characters but at the same point in time, it has that same greatness and that same energy and also that same great feeling of exploring characters and making the film feel a little bit more mature with its audience. And if Inside Out can do this, I'm not saying they're going to do a third film, but I imagine that if this film is successful, we probably will see a third film. I think it'll be interesting to see where they can take that, specifically with how the Toy Story franchise has grown, specifically with me, how each and every one of those films was a part of my life at a special point in time when I needed them. I think Inside Out's going to be that same way for the generation that actually grew up with the original film. So I'm so excited to talk about Inside Out 2 today. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, what I love talking about is the pros. So let's dive into the major pros of Inside Out 2, which I really want to talk about just the voice performances. Amy Poehler was like born to play Joy. I think she is so freaking great in this role. And I think what she actually does as a character and as a voice performer in here is actually a little bit more layered than the last film. You know, clearly these emotions feel more than just what their emotions are. You know, they say she's joy, she's sadness. And for me, when you look at these emotions, though, when they're interacting with one another or getting to a little bit more of a serious point, there can be a little bit more of an emotion in them. And I actually really like how they touched on that play. There comes a point between joy and a couple of the other emotions that actually almost swelled a tear in my eye, specifically with where she was as a character and where she was starting to feel. And I think, again, Amy Poehler did a great job there. Phyllis Smith, always great as sadness. I love what she did in the original film. And I think, again, in here, she is just a star. Louis Black is anger. I loved all the little tidbits they did with anger in the original film, but what I will also say in here is it was really nice to see that, yes, while we have so many new emotions to explore, which we'll talk about, the original emotions honestly get a lot of the show. They're not sidelined, and they do a great job of balancing two different storylines, the new emotions and the old emotions, and if you've seen the trailer, you obviously see the old emotions get bottled up which sometimes as teenagers, we would bottle up our emotions like that. And I liked how they actually handled that. I liked that idea. And I also liked that we got an adventure, not just with joy and sadness, but with anger, with disgust, with fear. We got touches into their personalities and it was nice to have them again along for the ride again. Lewis Black, awesome as anger, has a really good moment as well with joy here. Not just humorous, but actually heartfelt. Tony Hale takes on the role of fear. 
I will say after literally just rewatching the original Inside Out, which like, look at that steel book. That is beautiful right there. And then if you look at the back, you see the man who caused depression to me, Bing Bong. Um, you know, Bill Hader wasn't coming back for this. Neither was Mindy Kaling. And Tony Hale is a Lapiri take the roles of fear and disgust. And after just watching the original, sometimes the voices are a little bit off for me. I don't think kids will honestly care about that. But by the end of the film, it, it didn't really take an approach. And I thought they did a, a fantastic job as well. Yes, would it have been nice to have Mindy Kaling and Bill Hader back? Absolutely. But again, they do a great job here. But that's where I want to get to the new emotions. And I want to round them out. We have anxiety, envy, annoy, annoy. It's basically boredom and embarrassment. Now, these four new emotions are very much a core system. And I think a lot of these emotions have followed a lot of us from our teenage years into our adult years as well. And I think first off, each and every one of the voice performances in here are great. Now, embarrassment doesn't really talk, so I can't really talk too much on Paul Walter Hauser, but I did think embarrassment was cute and I like what they did with him. Uh, Annoy uh, Adele's character, pretty solid in here. Again, not really the standout of everyone. But Envy and Anxiety were fantastic. I actually wanted a little bit more of Envy because I think A.O. Edebury is just an absolute dynamite star. And what she puts into that voice performance is so great. <gasps> oh, look at your hair. <gasps> look at her hair. We need hair like that. Like just the like the little details on Envy. And we'll talk about the animation. I, I love, but it's also the voice performance that like clicks to that. But Maya Hawk as Anxiety is just phenomenal. Like I mentioned, Amy Poehler was born to play Joy. I would say Maya Hawk was born to also play Anxiety. There's not a single other soul that I could have imagined voicing this role and bringing Anxiety to life. And if that's the little shit that's living inside of me, then yeah, it was the perfect embodiment. Whether it was the look, whether it was the design, whether it was the way that Anxiety acted, it really felt and actually made me go back to my teenage years and be like, that is very cringy, but that is exactly how I was and exactly how I was feeling. What I've always loved about Pixar films is most of the time when they make movies, they make movies that kids can watch and that they can enjoy and that they'll grow up on and kind of notice a little bit more of the nuances. But they make films that truly hit to the adult's soul and makes them take a time capsule back to a certain piece of their life or maybe even something that they're dealing with now. And I think Inside Out 2, again, focuses in on those mature themes, but doesn't dumb it down for kids. Kids can watch this and enjoy it because of all the colorful nature of it. And that's why I really compare this franchise so far to what Toy Story did with its franchise, how it builds on each and every film. And again, we only have two Inside Out films at this point, so just comparing it basis off the first two Toy Stories, but also seeing how much time they let marinate on the Inside Out franchise to now take that approach and be like, okay, Riley has grown up, but so has the audience. And some of the audience might actually be teenagers themselves, if not actually coming out of their teenage years. Let's show them that now. Let's show them what they're going to be going through. And as I mentioned, Toy Story was a big part of that for me. When I saw Toy Story 1 for the first time, it was a piece that I really needed it to. Buzz was jealous, or Woody was jealous of Buzz, and I had just gotten a sister in my life. And I was jealous of my sister coming in. Then you see Toy Story 2 and it takes you on this big grand adventure. And Woody's trying to kind of discover himself. And in that time and frame of my life of being a kid, I was trying to discover who I wanted to be. And at the same point in time, I was being a little bit more adventurous, like Buzz and the crew going on. And looking at Inside Out 2, they like the first film did such a good job on building on certain aspects of the memory of the brain and having fun places with that this one doubles down on that and grows it they have this whole and i don't want to get into spoilers too much because i don't know what they showed in the trailer because i didn't watch the trailer i only saw the bottled up part they have this whole central piece that actually adds to the forefront and it, it answers a question that i had with the first film is does Riley call for the emotions that she needs or are the emotions dictating everything that she does? And you actually get an answer to that. And a lot of that is all built around this new thing of what makes Riley, what is the core to her? And I loved that because in the end of the day, that is what we are as human beings. 
And I know I'm getting really into this, but that's because I loved this movie so much. And I love this franchise of what they Pixar has developed themselves. And I think a lot of that shout-out needs to be given to Kelsey Mann, who I think did an, an excellent job directing this. And I think what Pete Docter eventually originally established in the first film is just showcased and evolved here. Is it better than the first Inside Out? I don't think so. I think it lacks a little bit of emotional depth. Like, nothing hit me as hard as Bing Bong or Joy and Sadness coming together. But there were a couple points where I almost teared up. And, but it locked me in, and I was fully engaged and fully entertained throughout it. And maybe on a couple rewatches, I might change my mind and be like, you know what, this is better than the first one, but the first Inside Out really hit me at a point in time that I needed it to hit me. And that's going to be different for everybody, but again, really like the voice performances in here. Love the depth that they went into in here. And I also want to talk about the animation, because I think the animation for each and every one of the emotions, you expect Pixar to always deliver the best animation in the business. I still contend that it really is. There's some animation going on over in Japan that is also absolutely incredible and I love like certain things like clay animation with what like Walsh and Gromit has or Chicken Run or even of course what Pinocchio did a couple years ago Del Toro's but Pixar still re remains my favorite film studio of all time and I've always said that they push the boundaries of what animation can do and animation storytelling can do and there's a couple moments in here where I just found myself baffled by how they can craft such gorgeous animation whether it's through a brainstorm, uh, you'll you'll keep that, or even like one thing where it's like this giant pit of all the memory balls are flowing and seeing how the emotions are like in there and they're never getting lost. Like you can clearly see what's happening. It always becomes a fun adventure. And that's like the one thing. This is a bigger adventure through Riley's mind. We don't really revisit anything that we've seen prior, but we introduce new concepts and go through things that introduce new ideas that would maybe develop through puberty which is just absolutely clever and i love this adventure and i love the animation that was tied into all of that the score as well absolutely great really tugs on the heartstrings quite a bit through and the humor i i laughed consistently throughout this i just can't believe that pixar again created another timeless classic and maybe you might say there's a little bit of biasness to this because I do love a lot of what Pixar does, but they just hit the right notes for me almost every single time. And even if it's a movie that maybe I can't fully relate to, I can still find some silver lining. Now, don't get me wrong, they haven't made uh, total perfect movies. There's a couple bad ones, and I will have a Pixar ranking up this week with Inside Out 2 included, but... It just, it brings a smile to my face and it always feels like a joyous celebration. Like every year I get a, if I get a Pixar movie in theaters, it is a joyous event personally for me. And it's one that I love going to. Last but not least, before I tie up this review, the last thing I want to mention is there's a couple characters that get introduced in here that are like locked away in Riley's mind. And those characters are so great. They're small, very small roles. But I love what it touches in and shows a little bit more of Riley as a person and also made me start looking in the back of my mind. So count that as a win. Inside Out 2 in some ways reminds me again of Toy Story 2, a bigger adventure with more characters and more things to explore and builds off the original in a beautiful way. Reasons being Inside Out 2 is another Pixar timeless classic that I completely adored and am so happy to say so. I can't wait to see more hopefully of this franchise and as a fan of the first I thought they knocked this out of the park. I still like the first just a tiny bit more but maybe on rewatches this will grow on me and become even more of my favorite. I can't wait again to see what Pixar does next and overall I am going to give Inside Out 2 an A-. minus. Thank you guys for watching this make sure to hit that like subscribe button comment down below your guys thoughts and of course until next time stay classy.